Hey YouTube, today we're going to be taking a look at the B650 chipset for AM4. Um, I did get a couple of requests, so I did do like kind of like a mini series on X670 and X670E. And I did get some comments, people were asking about B650 and B650E. So uh, we're going to do the exact same thing, similar format to what we did on the X670 mini series. So now we're going to be covering Gigabyte today, and then we're going to be going over some other ones um, all the different motherboard vendors in subsequent videos. So let's get into some examples now. Kind of a budget one that is it encompasses everything, so it uses all the lanes. And then I chose a middle of the road one, so that one would be the Arrow G. I chose the B650E Oris Master as the flagship because I think this one is a good like if you want, if you still if you don't want to spend like you know, $500 or more on a motherboard because that seems kind of outrageous. Uh, this one is kind of the flagship on the budget-oriented chips. That's a B650E, so it does not compromise on Gen 5 lanes, and it does have things like the postcode debug and that sort of thing. The first one here, so this is going to be the B650 Oris Elite. So looking at the web page here, um, you know, you can kind of get a description or a readout on what it comes with in terms of add-ons and built-in ports. Um, but what I like to do is I like to go to the manual because I think the manual is the most useful piece of documentation for providing the block diagram. And Gigabyte has done a good job uh, with these motherboards in particular. The motherboard block diagram is provided in the manual. So let's take a look at this here. So this is going to be the V650 Oris Elite AX. You can see because it's a B650 chipset, that means that the first, the first M.2 slot will be Gen 5 capable. So that's four lanes of Gen 5. The remaining CPU lanes, those 20 remaining lanes, so in this case 16 and 4, so that's 20, that's going to be 4.0, and that's wired directly into the CPU. So you can see the graphics card is handled by a 4.0 bus. There's 16 lanes there. And then there's a M.2 slot for an NVMe drive that can support up to a Gen 4 SSD. So it is worth noting, if you were to buy a Gen 5 SSD, you would want to put that in the M2A underscore CPU. If you were to plug that into the Gen 4 M.2 drive, you would only get the Gen 4 speed. And likewise, if you were to take a Gen 4 drive and plug it into the Gen 5 slot, it would only run at Gen 4. So it's always going to run at the lowest common denominator. Of That being said, that's going to take care of the CPU lanes. You have one display port, one HDMI, the BIOS. Uh, those are all in there. The integrated audio on the back of the motherboard also plugs in directly to the CPU. So that's really good. That means it's going to have very, very low latency for those who do a lot of like auto audio sound work. I mean, that's going to be really good because you're bypassing the entire chipset. That is most likely wired up via the USB 2 interface on the back of the mother or on the the uh, CPU. So moving on to the chipset, then you know you have the four links, the four lanes between the CPU and the chipset. The chipset is going to comprise of eight lanes of Gen 4 and four lanes of Gen 3. So what Gigabyte has done here is all four of those Gen 3 lanes are wired up to the four SATA ports. So that takes care of all the Gen 3 lanes. Um, but you might notice here there's Gen 4 and there's Gen 3. So in reality, this set of Gen 3 or this Gen 3 bus is actually the 4.0 bus, but Gigabyte is only running it at up to 3.0 speed. They do that so they don't need as much electronic read drivers. Uh, so they can kind of cut costs on it. So it's kind of a, a cost-saving measure. But this is actually part of the Gen 4 bus. They've just down downrated it to 3.0. Because the 3.0 lanes on the chipset are either going to be 3.0 or they're going to be SATA. And because there's four SATA here, that tells me that the natural 3.0 lanes are wired up to the SATA ports. And this is actually part of the Gen 4 bus. So like I said earlier, there's eight lanes total of Gen 4. So we see four of them are here to this third M.2 drive. So Gigabyte has not has used every single lane available to them, um, with the one exception being that the 4.0, half of the 4.0 bus is only running at 3.0 speed. They do that as a cost-saving measure 
so they don't need as many retimers for 4.0. So what they've done here is there's 2x of this one lane. So there's 2x1 slots, that's two lanes. Here's one more lane for Wi-Fi and one more lane for the 2.5 gig NIC. So that's four total plus four from the M.2. So that's all eight lanes are accounted for. And then you have the SATA, the four SATA ports using up all of the Gen 3 lanes. So everything is accounted for. Overall, this is a decent motherboard in terms of uh, layout and everything is in use. Uh, no Thunderbolt add-on support on this motherboard though. So next we're going to look at one that's a little bit more higher up the chain in terms of features and the price point. So this one's still under $300. This is going to be the Gigabyte B650 Aero G. Um, this one marks the middle of the road. I think it has a really good balance of, you know, Wi-Fi 6E, lots of USB ports on the back. You get the 20 gigabit. You have uh, HDMI, and then for some reason you have a DisplayPort input. So this is kind of like the Asus Pro Creator series because it does have a DisplayPort input, which I think is really interesting. Um, but it's still also relatively budget because it is under three hundred dollars. And and I would consider considering where we're at with the way prices are today, I I don't think it's unreasonable to say that anything under three hundred dollars is considered a a decent budget in terms of motherboard funding, right? So it's like if you're building a new PC, you kind of have to take into account that the motherboards now, if you want a really decent motherboard, it's going to be somewhere between. 200 to 300 dollars um anything below that i do think that unfortunately because of the way things are uh you're not gonna be able to get a very good motherboard unless you really just want something that's cheap or small form factor like a micro atx motherboard you know there's a lot of options there uh, but i think that for 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 what i do you know with content creation i do kind of think that uh if you go below 200 dollars, there's too much compromise um, on the side of the motherboard manufacturer may have left chipset lanes like disconnected so they're unused so it's just kind of a waste of money uh, or you're just not able to capitalize on the functionality of the chipset so i would kind of stay within the 200 to 300 dollar price range if i was on a budget with that being said let's take a look at the block diagram for the arrow g so the arrow g is a really good middle of the line option so just like with the oris elite you get four lanes of Gen 5 for an M.2 drive, then you have the remaining CPU lanes as Gen 4. So nothing different here. This is pretty much the exact same setup. The only difference is they do have a switch um, wired to the CPU that allows a DisplayPort input. Uh, and then it's either DisplayPort input um, and it, it allows you to output via a USB-C on the back of the motherboard that supports the DisplayPort alt mode. So that's a very interesting function without using a Thunderbolt chipset because typically you'd use a Thunderbolt chipset for this. So Gigabyte has done a little bit of an interesting approach in terms of how they have provided this resource for those who wanted to capture uh, like a video feed and then do something with that, pass that through via the DisplayPort alt mode to an external display. So kind of an interesting thing there. Um, I guess if you guys find this useful, like let me know in the comments below in what scenario is the DisplayPort input useful, uh, having that wired to a switch for DisplayPort alt mode. Because it almost looks to me like because this is a switch, you should be able to leave this empty. And then if you plug a monitor into this, you'll get display out from the CPU's integrated graphics. So you can switch between the integrated graphics or the DisplayPort input. So that's that's kind of unique. So that alone, you know, at a two hundred something dollar motherboard price point, that seems like an interesting feature. It's definitely like a niche feature, though. I don't really think a lot of people are going to use this. Uh, but let me know in the comments. Uh, you know, if you're familiar with this, uh, what is this actually used for? Like, what what is that? What's the use case there? Because I'm curious to know. So moving on to the chipset, then. We have the eight lanes of 4.0 and the four lanes of 3.0. All four lanes of the 3.0 are dedicated to the SATA ports. So that, again, just like with the Aorus Elite, the PCI Express 4 bus is split, where half of it is running at the full 4.0 speed for an M.2 slot, or 
a PCI Express X4. So um, it's good that this motherboard gives the option to run an X4 expansion card. I do think that that is a very, very useful thing to have. A lot of people that don't really recognize the usefulness of that are probably just going to be fine running a third M.2 drive uh, at 4.0 speeds. So that's really nice. Um, but if you're someone like me and you want to run a 4K capture card, this motherboard can do that. The only compromise is that you're only going to be able to run two M.2 drives directly off of the CPU with no no option for one off of the chipset uh, unless you don't use that 4.0 lane. Uh, and then the other half of the 4.0 bus is down-regulated to 3.0 as a cost-saving measure, uh, and they are using one lane of one, one lane for an X1 ex expansion slot, and then the network, so the, the 2.5 gig LAN and the the Wi-Fi. So one lane is unallocated for on this uh, motherboard, as far as I can tell. So that leaves us with the last one. So now we're going to talk about the flagship of the B650 line. So this is going to be a B650E. The E means that it's going to give you 24 lanes of Gen 5, as opposed to just 4 lanes of Gen 5 plus 20 lanes of Gen 4 off of the CPU. So if we take a look at the block diagram, so this one looks way more, uh, there's like a lot more going on with this motherboard compared to the previous two. So, like I said, it's a, it's a B650E, so that all the CPU lanes are going to be full PCI 5.0 bandwidth. So, what they've done is they've taken 16 of the lanes and they've wired them to a switch. So, 16 lanes go to the switch, and it'll either going to be, it's either going to be 16 lanes for the graphics card, and then these two M.2 drives, so M2B and M2C will be unused if you were to use those that will make the graphics card run at x8 it doesn't matter if you use both of them or just one of them as soon as you connect one of these two m.2 drives that connects to that switch whether it's m2b or m2c that will force the graphics card slot to run at x8 so that is one limitation of this motherboard that is the exact same limitation found on every single Z790 Intel motherboard. So, it, but the thing is, this is a B650 chipset. So, you know, there is some kind of compromise there. So the, the nice thing about it is that it still gives you potentially four M.2 drives that can all run at up to Gen 5 speed without any issue. The only compromise is that two of those drives share lanes with the graphics card. So that's just something to keep in mind. So if you're only going to run, you know, two M.2 drives, make sure you use M2A and M2D because those are off of the bus without without peeling lanes away from the graphics card. So that's a no compromise there. But if you want to run three and four drives, you know, that's going to be a compromise on the graphics card slot. Um, but that's... That's the only downside of going with a B650E as opposed to an X670 or X670E. That's where the higher end chipset actually makes a difference. So, uh, moving on, you know, the, the audio is still off of the CPU, so that's really nice. BIOS is there, HDMI out is there. Um, you know, you get USB Type C on here. It's lots of USB, so same as the others. But then here's where it's a little bit interesting. So, the chipset here, because Gigabyte opted to use the CPU lanes for all the M.2 drives. That gives all eight lanes on the chipset of 4.0 available for different things. So I really like the way that they've used the chipset lanes. Um, so they're giving you four lanes for an express expansion slot. That expansion slot is perfect for... Uh, you know a 4k 60 capture card or if you wanted you could add a Thunderbolt add-in card and that you could get USB 4 off of this uh, Expansion slot so it does uh, it does feature that so you can see right here on the block or on the motherboard layout It has the THB underscore u4 That is the Thunderbolt 4 header for that GC Maple Ridge capture card that I have done an unboxing and installation video on this channel Featuring an X670E Aorus Master. So it's nice to see that you can get the exact same 
function off of the B650 E Aorus Master. So you also get, you know, the two lanes, an X2 slot of Gen 4. So this could potentially be for a new uh, 10 gigabit network interface card if those actually become a thing. Because I know that you only really need two lanes of Gen 4 for a 10 gigabit NIC. That is something that I have seen uh, on a lot of, looking at a lot of motherboard block diagrams. I've seen like Gigabyte, MSI, all of them basically have been using two lanes of Gen 4 for a 10 gigabit LAN card. So I know it can be done. So it makes me think that the reason why they're doing X2 is for a 10 gigabit LAN card. And it has to be X2 of Gen 4 if, I, if I'm not mistaken. So that's really nice. You could run a Gen, you could run a 10 gigabit LAN uh, and you could run a 4K60 capture card or a Thunderbolt add-in card for USB 4. And then you could, you know, daisy chain an external 4K60 capture card off of that Thunderbolt card. So I really do like how this chipset is implemented. Then you get the Wi-Fi 6E and you get the 2.5 gigabit Intel LAN. So the 3.0 bus, again, all four of those lanes are going to the SATA drives. So overall, this one's a really nice flagship. The only compromise is with the graphics card sharing lanes with two of those M.2 drives. You're not really talking about a massive loss in performance, but it is something that a lot of people don't like when there's lane sharing. Um, but I would say, like, if you don't want to spend a crazy amount of money on a motherboard and you want all the bells and whistles and you want things like the postcode debug, you know, the BIOS flashback button, the power switch button, all these reset buttons, everything all on the motherboard or on the back of the motherboard with the support for Thunderbolt on an AMD platform, I think this is still a really good option. Um, it's got everything that I think most people would need. So with that said, I hope you guys liked this video of this sort of in-depth look at the B650 and B650E platform. Please leave a comment if you have a question about you know any of these motherboards or any other motherboard from Gigabyte that we didn't talk about. And with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.